you can put it on top of a Super NES. That's the only thing I'm getting out of this picture. Hey everyone, welcome back to Weekly Daily Wednesdays, where we sit back, relax, take that midweek break, talk about some of the fun things going on in the world of Linux and open source. I'm Vince Stone, joined every week by Jill Bryan and everybody watching us live on hey. Twitch. How's it going? <laughs> middle of the week. Plenty of time to get into something desperately. Yes. yes. 100%. 100%. Jill was, um, like low key showing <laughs> off. She's going to help herself. Like, wrote in the show notes, like, psst, psst, look. I yeah, so I, I do. <laughs> what is that thing you okay. were showing us, Jill? So last week we were talking about the upcoming release of the Raspberry Pi 5. And the Raspberry Pi company sent me one last week. Yay! <laughs> so cool. It was nice to get a little bit of a, a message forwarded from even Upton. <laughs> So that was really, really nice. And they sent me the Pi 5. They sent me a whole kit. I got the keyboard and the mouse and the little heat sink. Isn't it cute? I still got to put that on it. <laughs> so adorbs. Here is the keyboard. It looks very similar to my Raspberry I've Pi 400. Yeah. yeah, but it's just thinner. It's thinner than the Raspberry Pi 400 keyboard. So that's it's just the keyboard. And then I have the mouse too. All the things, <laughs> but that was that was so nice of them. So now I'm gonna have fun. I've I've thought about a couple really cool Raspberry Pi five projects to do, <laughs> and I have one I want to do here on LWW. So <laughs> I'm excited. <laughs> it's pretty good. One thing we were talking about in uh, the pre-show, and I was like, I think it's a little smaller. Mm -hmm. and I'm like. Maybe it is, maybe it's not. And I had that thought is like, yeah. I couldn't tell you the exact size of a Raspberry Pi because what I was talking to last week, one of the deciders about not pre ordering one for me was, I'm waiting for a case because, kind of like a mobile device, a Raspberry Pi is something that I take out of the box and it goes directly into a case. I'm terrified of having something like that floating around on a desk. Yeah. Yeah, Vin and I were talking about that earlier, and I realized that the same thing with me. I, I said, well, it looks like it's the Raspberry Pi 5 is smaller than the 4, but I have a Raspberry Pi 400, and my other Raspberry Pi 4 is in a case, too. So I haven't really looked at my Raspberry Pis in a while, because they're all in cases as well. Oh, man. <laughs> Including, like, my Raspberry Pi uh, 3 and my 2. I've, I've got every generation. <laughs> they're all in cases. I got a three and a four, and I got a one. I know where my one is. I have no idea where the three is, and the four is running our Jitsi server right now. So yes, there is that. Uh, my awesome. mail package wasn't quite as uh, interesting because they sent me the wrong thing. <laughs> oh no! Oh, no. I, I know. Yesterday during Trackmania, yeah, like, oh were... man, where's that? Yeah, at? and uh, no, it was just like an old hipster camera lens that I because I got one for like crazy cheap, and I'm like, can I just get another one for crazy cheap? And I put a bit on one, and I was like, oh, I want another one, huh? <laughs> I get it. It's for like a Minolta. I'm like, God. at least the seller was really because now I'm at that thing of like it was like a twenty dollar lens. I'm like, I'm even gonna go through the trouble of sending this back for twenty bucks, you know? Yeah. But the seller was super <laughs> cool with it. I hit him up and I'm like, uh, this, this is Minolta. I'm like, I'm gonna have to fight you over this. And what I wanted to see was like, did you just send me the wrong thing? That was kind of my hope of hopes, right? Yeah. Like, <laughs> oh. Maybe you just accidentally sent me the, because uh, this, you know, they make this particular lens. This is a lens from the early 70s. And uh, they made it for Minolta. They made it for Nikon. They made it for Canon. And I'm like, hey, do you just happen mm -hmm. to have a Nikon laying around? Maybe put the run. He's like, nah, man, I messed up. And I'm like, dang it. So now I got to make that decision of do I do want to. Do you send it back? Uh, send it back, get an adapter plate for it. And um, I don't know. Haven't made up my mind just yet. But something. I did notice if you run Debian, which is the correct Linux distribution to run, there was an update earlier this week, and um, about 100 packages got updated. One of them was Thunderbird, an email client that I use, and it now has the new interface, Jill. Ooh, cool. With the search bar at the top and ah. all the folders in weird places and uh, the inability to check my mail. In each of my email accounts, unless the email account is expanded, 
But cool. I thought that was a good topic to start on because email, social media, web page stuff uh, can be yeah. hard to keep track of if you got a bunch of it. Oh, definitely. So for those of you out there, do you like the look and interface of TweetDeck? I used to love it, but I don't want to pay X or Zitter, as we call it, instead of Twitter, Zitter. I, I like then started calling it Zitter. <laughs> I didn't want to pay them to use it. Well, then uh, FeedDeck is the perfect open source app uh, to use. FeedDeck is similar to TweetDeck, but you can view many of your social media and RSS feeds. You are not just locked into one, which I really loved about this app. Uh, the feeds are organized in a column stru structure like TweetDeck and Mastodon. And the social media accounts you can view include Knitter, Reddit, Tumblr, X, Medium, and Mastodon. Knitter, by the way, is a free and open source alternative viewer for Twitter and X. So that, <laughs> that's why it's called Knitter. It's cute. And uh, you can also view your GitHub accounts. Uh, you can um, add your favorite podcasts, your favorite YouTube channels, RSS feeds, and Google News. I've actually set up my feed deck to view several of my favorite YouTube accounts, including Linux Gamecast and Linux News via Google News, and several of my favorite Linux podcasts, which I can play back with Feedback Deck's integrated media player. It's, it's actually, I was really happy they, they have that in there embedded. And uh, there's a separate RSS podcast feed column for LWW, of course, on my feed deck. And it's, it's kind of cool also because you can add several sources per column. So I can add the LWW audio podcast as well as the LWW YouTube feeds. So that's, that's a really nice feature. And I have separate columns for Mastodon and X too. And uh, uh, unlike... TweetDeck, though, you can't actually tweet. This is just a viewer for social media to keep a track of the news and, and all the peeps on social media. It's a glorified RSS reader. Yeah, it is. But it's really nice. It's really organized. I've been using it for the last week, and I've got like 16 columns now. <laughs> and you can actually grab FeedDeck as a flat pack on FlatHub. Android and iOS apps are coming soon. And there is a, actually a really cool web, web interface as well. And native Linux, Mac OS, and Windows apps are coming soon. Feedback, FeedDeck, though, is not completely free. But FeedDeck is free to self-host yourself. That would be a, a kind of a fun thing to put on a Raspberry Pi. <laughs> That's for sure. See if that works on a Raspberry Pi. It should work just fine. And um, or... Uh, you can pay uh, $5.30 a month for up to 1,000 sources, unlimited decks and columns, and the mobile and desktop apps you'll be able to use for the $5.30 and $30 a month. And I'm actually going to buy this because I really like this project. It's still a work in project. Not everything is working yet, but I really like what I see. And it is nice to have your RSS feeds, your podcasts, everything in one place. I have been enjoying that a lot. Yeah, so this is a really good uh, application. And I like that you can self-host it for free. That's nice. <laughs> well, I like that the option's there. And, mm -hmm. you know, don't let the flat pack scare you away because you can head over to their GitHub and set it. Right. Yeah, I saw Tarjot GZs on there, yeah. too. Yeah. Now, up next is version 8.0 of Adore, which is a digital audio workstation that uh, I used for a long time. I did. Woohoo. Oh, man. I, I, look at that. Woo <laughs> I, I have a uh, scrolling plugin that if I don't get lined up just right, I can kind of go oh. through. <laughs> wiggle, 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 wiggle. Right? <laughs> so version 8 is out, and it is slowly crawling, kicking, and screaming into the modern era. I'm very happy to see that. One of the big updates in 8.0, it comes in the form of added support for the Novation Launchpad Beep Boop Tippy Tap Pro. Should I just scroll down here and show you what this thing looks like? <laughs> yeah, I should. Let's see. Da, 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 this thing. Look at it. That's the That's Launchpad cool. Pro. It's a 
control surface made entirely of rainbows and skittles. Yes, it's beautiful. <laughs> you can press on it and do all kinds of things. Um, but now this critter, it works like it does in Ableton Live. It's going to work like that in Odor. You can also use it to launch clips and do your pans, gains, adjustments, everything else that you might normally do. And another big announcement is... Here? Yes. Here yeah, look at that. So this is freehand automation drawing. What is automation? Look at that. You're drawing curves, right? You, even if you've never cracked open a digital audio workstation in your life, you're like, I have an idea what's going on right there. You're like, hmm. Yeah, those are keyframes. You can think about it like that. Now, traditionally, if you're drawing keyframes, now why would you have to draw a keyframe anyway? Okay. Say we were doing, uh, I don't know, a podcast. Okay. <laughs> now, this is a good way to control volume. So we record a digital audio workstation, unlike you know, let's say Audacity, right? Audacity, a lot of people are familiar with. That's like your first thing with a record button, and it records when you press record, and a lot of people stick with it. A DAW is non-destructive, so what it's recording is just the raw audio. Like when I'm talking, Jill's talking, it's just getting those, and that's what's safe. So anything you do to it afterwards is kind of layered on top of it, and it's, it never touches that original raw audio. So when we're drawing these curves, Let's say I was too quiet, or Jill was too loud, or vice versa. I could say this was just my gain automation. And I can go, well, I need this part to come down and this part to come back up. So when I play it back, everything will be balanced. Traditionally, you could only do this in chunks. You see the top there. That's the very segmented, you know, that's me trying to make a transparent GIF from a ping in uh, GIMP. You know, click, click, click. It's just straight lines. Now you can do the freehand drawing, which will give you that much smoother, more natural curve. And this is something that's been curiously just not an odd door for quite some time, unfortunately. But it's here. I'm very happy to see it. And um, they've also sorted a couple of long standing jack issues uh, with your audio and MIDI back in, but they didn't go into detail about that. So I don't know. And um, I've already put together the build guide for getting this up and running on Debian 12, compiling it from source. If you want, I might have that uh, probably later this week, maybe early next week. Bunch of good fixes. And if you use Odor, good news. I mean, support mm. the project. I've bought Odor a couple of times. Odor is kind of one of the weird ones because uh, it, you buy it with a subscription. And there's like a bunch of different, or I think you can do a $40 one-time donation and get it. Or as you might think, wait a minute, isn't this just included? Yes, most distributions include it because it is uh, open source software. So you're free to download it and build it yourself in a lot of distributions, and package it, and ship it, which is perfectly fun. Yeah, go, go play with it. Uh, I compiled it, I opened it, launched it, didn't have any problems with it. You know, just dragged a couple of things. I'm like, okay, it works, but... You know, I, I went over to the Reaper side these days. Why? Yeah. <laughs> why? It doesn't matter why. A digital audio workstation is a digital audio workstation, whatever you want to use. Why do I? Here's what I say in all my Reaper videos it's the best digital audio workstation on Linux with a scythe in the logo. Because mm -hmm. you can't argue that. There's not another digital audio workstation with a scythe in the logo on Linux. And that's why I use Reaper. Fight me. <laughs> yeah. Well, Finn, I actually love what the Ar Ardor uh, blog states, and, and this was, <laughs> when I read this, this is so true of a lot of open source apps on Linux. Uh, it states, some people will no doubt laugh at a few of these new features, given that they've been in some other DAWs for 20 years or more. That's okay. We laugh, too, when we see other DAWs finally adding things that Ador could do back in tw 2005. <laughs> Lol. <laughs> <laughs> so true. <laughs> uh, I wish that was still true with Odor. <laughs> now, you ever watched a movie, Joe? Yes. <laughs> uh, what a perfect way to do that. <laughs> so this is the CinePy version 2, an open source, high quality cinema camera using a Raspberry Pi. Yes, you can make your own home theater using a Raspberry Pi. <laughs> it uses hardware and software available from Adafruit, Pimo Ran Ronnie, SparkFi, Fun, and Raspberry Pi, etc. 
and the CAD and STL files are included, so you can modify it to your heart's content. And everything can be modified, like the buttons and the, and the display. But the Raspberry Pi 4B and the high quality camera module cannot be changed. So this project does require experience with a bit of sol soldering. Probably uh, more soldering than I have experience with. <laughs> but we have a lot of, lot of uh, viewers in our community that know how to use soldering, ir soldering irons really well, like then. So the, the CinePi version allegedly. 2. <laughs> allegedly. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, Steve Husband, he knows how to use a, so a soldering I, I got, iron. <laughs> I definitely have projects that would not seem to make that statement true. Oh, okay. I can do simple, simple stuff, but I've never done anything really complex. So, you know, build little kits like Heath kits and that kind of thing. So, but the Cinepi version 2 features a Super 8 sized sensor using a Sony IMX 477, a 12-bit Cinema DNG recording, uh, a four inch high res touchscreen interface, USB 3.0 external SSD recording, and an internal high capacity battery. And this one, it just looks so cute, cool, and cute. It's like a, you know, a, a miniature old school cinema camera. It's one of my key criteria the for my uh, cinema cameras, <laughs> too. I like, I'm their shop, and I'm like, you know what? That's not cute enough. No, nope, yeah. not good enough. <laughs> not cute enough. <laughs> and the be the detailed build guide is is not out yet, but is coming soon. And I just want to thank you to our patron advisor, our Theron in chat, for posting this in our show suggestions in our Discord channel. <laughs> this was a very cool project that that he ran across. Now let's get on to this guy, but first we got to go to this most uh, 1980s neon steampunk jiggly page. Look at this. This is so purple. It's what awesome. is this? It's Hi. Zima. I like then how you can use the, the middle scroll button to, to explode. It, it's, it was, <laughs> part, you know what, you know? when we're doing a show <laughs> like this and people are watching live and they're watching the video version, it is super neat. When I was just trying to get to the bottom of the page to get to the specs, I was mad because I was yeah. on a tablet. <laughs> you had like, to go through this. on. <laughs> so this is the Zima a couple of weeks ago we talked about the zima board yeah the x86 yeah. mini pc passively cool had that pci hole hanging out the side of it it's pretty decent and it was starting at like 120 bucks without a power cord as i pointed out and i was kind of interested in it but i thought that was really neat right up until about now because this is the blade this is the blade nice. and uh it's truly a pie-sized brick Look, it comes with neon and CRT monitors and a Super <laughs> yeah. NES that it, you can just set it. You can you can put it on top of a Super NES. That's the only thing I'm getting out of this picture because I don't know what you're trying to convey to people here. Um, I mean, you can As put it on retro top. Retro look. <laughs> yeah, I guess. I, I guess this is the most nonsensical. Uh, There's Matrix. <laughs> yeah, dude. Like you, you can okay, you can clearly lean the Zima blade against other objects. That is what they're really trying to. <laughs> drive home it's very good at being leaned against other things up to including <laughs> a super nintendo but this is pie size blocks you know this is a, the blade's kind of elongated did we just have some pit okay this is why i have the other page pulled up so we can actually get some photos of this cursed thing there it is yay it, this is pie size you know uh, slightly larger than a credit card and um it comes in the same dual and quad cpu flavors and Unlike the Zima board, this has got SODIM. Bring your own RAM to the party. You decide how much mm -hmm. memory it has, which is really nice. Now, I pulled up Geekbench numbers because I've been doing, I'm working on that Raspberry Pi video, and I wanted to see what the performance of the Raspberry Pi 4 was in Geekbench against the i5-3470 CPUs that are on these old Dell 3010s, which, you know, are roughly about the same price as a Raspberry Pi 4. Decimated Raspberry Pi 4. It's not even. It's like, ooh. But then again, the Raspberry Pi 4 is using a couple of watts, and these things are using like 70 watts. Yeah. So the power power envelope is kind of out of whack. But if um, everything's to be believed, because they have the uh, Geekbench scores for this, uh, this thing is almost twice as fast 
as the 3010, as the i5-3470, which the i5-3470 is almost twice as fast as the Raspberry Pi 4. Wow. So you're like, okay, fine. Maybe you're going to shell out, you know, a hundred bucks for one. No, you're not. You're not because they're 60 bucks. Mm. Amazing. 60 bucks. That's going to get you the basic 2.2 dual core. But come on, mini display port, USB holes. Wow. All the things. That's got a clear <laughs> case. It's got a white PCB. You know, do you know how much better yes. you can lean something, lean this up against <laughs> something with a white PCB versus a green? It leans so much better. It yeah. really does. And it's got a real time clock, I'm assuming, because it's got a battery hanging off of it. There it is, the CMOS. <laughs> oh, uh, nice little block diagram. Yeah, I'm, uh, I make more excited about this. I, I feel like I neo dodged bullet just a little bit on this one because uh this is the one i, I would uh, okay if i ordered yeah. the sema board and this came out i would be upset yeah yeah because this, this is, is what, what you I needed want. right yeah <laughs> like, this is the one i want to play with and um yeah there it is go uh see look you can you can attach it to a graphics card not the other way around mm -hmm. <laughs> look at that <laughs> That's so cool. You, you don't put a graphics card on it. You put it into a graphics it, it, card. Into it. <laughs> They've already hit 179,000 of their 50,000 goal, and uh, the funding ends at the end of October with... Uh, when are these going to ship, Jill? Did you look yeah, that up? I, I, didn't. I didn't look it up, actually, but uh, I just think it's so cool that you know, it takes an industry standard sodium VIN. That is so awesome that you can install your, so you can install your own RAM. And it says up to 16 gigabyte, which is, which is pretty cool. Maybe you could push it a little bit more to 32. <laughs> Who knows? I found it. Okay, these are going to start shipping to backers. <laughs> so if you get in right now, oh, okay. you can get, uh, they're going to start shipping in January. Nice. That's a good timeline. Yeah. That's not bad. Um, December, February, March. So probably somewhere around like March, we'll probably see some general availability for them. Cool. Yeah, you can yeah. absolutely uh, run pretty much anything. Like, uh, the, I think it's a good thing though that they're really driving home the um, emulation. Yeah, absolutely. You know, Intel's virtualization technologies on a computer this small is really a game changer because that's so powerful. You know, that's. Uh, the the Intel implementation of that is uh, stupendous. How much for a power cord, Zima? How much for a power cord? Sixty four dollars. Sixty four dollars <laughs> and uh, no power cord. Seventy six. Ninety six. No power cord. One hundred twenty. <laughs> there we go. wait. Yes, yes. One hundred twenty eight dollars for the uh, model yeah. that comes with a power cord. Yes, and I think the Zima Blade, the twelve core, forty eight gigabyte, three node cluster for three hundred ninety two dollars. That's pretty sweet. <laughs> You know, that's the perfect thing to buy uh, somebody in your family who just knows nothing about computers. Just dump that on them. Like, here you go. Say yeah. about you. <laughs> there you go. I actually love the cyberpunk theming, the design and the logos on the hardware and, and you know, the whole website in general and the design is, as well. Just like with the other Zima board that was kind of 60s modern looking and this is more cyberpunk. Yeah, they, they, they got to, I mean, that's who they're. <laughs> aiming for because like yeah, um, us nerds <laughs> emulate i wouldn't say us nerds because i looked at that and i was like that's a disease looking website give me some numbers um, <laughs> yes <laughs> well you know what's so funny then is the way the pcie connector sticks out makes it look like the buttons on a retro portable cassette player that's the first thing i thought of this is a cyberpunk cyber deck cassette player computer <laughs> <laughs> Yes. All right. <laughs> you don't think so? Yeah, that's that's the first thing I I, I saw. No, I saw that, and I'm like, I'm putting a fiber optic card in there. Oh, okay. Because <laughs> that's been like one of the big hangups for replacing these uh, Dell boxes. Like with an yeah. SBC, I'd have to use Ethernet, mm -hmm. which would require me to not buy anything. I have a converters and all that, but this i could just use my existing fiber optic cards and like slap them in the side and just run them so uh Very 60 cool. yeah 60 bucks man come on I'm, I'm gonna pick up two of these and uh play around with it i look yeah. forward to it 
<laughs> okay. We're 10 minutes over time, Joe. We got to run. Okay. Um, real quick before we get out of here. If you like what we do, uh, wait, before I say any of that, thank you for supporting us. If you're a Patreon, patreon.com forward slash Linux Gamecast, you make these shows possible. This is uh, just us doing what we do, showing up, having some fun, do a bunch of uh, little bonus things for you. You get early access to videos I'm working on behind the scenes if you're curious about things along those lines. If you like, can't make the live show and you want that in podcast format, we got it. You get a custom RSS feed over at patreon.com. And, uh, once I get my workflow hammered out, they haven't like locked it in yet, but as soon as uh, YouTube pulls that trigger on uh, preventing me from removing the bazillion mid-roll ads, like I'm just going to start because uh, Patreon's got an option for me to just upload the video where you can just watch it without commercials, which I think is a good idea. Yeah, that's nice. And uh, yeah, access to our Discord coming out with me and Jill on Friday. We Tuesdays and Fridays, we do Track Mania. It's a nice little community hangout. Mm. We do. So if you want to have like conversations with either of us and... Uh, Scoot around some tracks and some cars in an 11 year old game. We got you covered. And uh, tomorrow night, Jordan's going to be back with, he's playing Baldur's Gate. He's doing a little bit of a playthrough on Linux, which is kind of interesting to watch. Mm -hmm. And Saturday, we do Linux Game Cast Weekly. Also, I want to thank uh, Nubbin for a 40 month resub. Yay, Nubbin. Thank you so All much, those. Nubbin. And uh, Basil <laughs> threw down a resub on Saturday. Think awesome. that. I think Basil was like 45. It was something abstract. I'm like, geez. That's wow. Like crazy. Been on Twitch that long. <laughs> All right, Joe. We got to get mm -hmm. out of here. Let's go ahead and bring up the music. Yay. Bouncy credits. fun music. Oh, did I not do the credits? Oh, I got to change the oh. credits. I did do the credits. I did. Hang on, everybody. We're not, okay. we're not dead yet. We got it. Uh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> boom. Ha. There I, we go. I forgot to uh, modify it in OBS because I was splitting out the credits for a different oh, scene. Oh, okay. <laughs> Crisis 3. I've played the original Crisis. Oh. Yeah, thank you, Nubbin, again for your 41-month for sub. And thank you to Artharon also, again, for providing some topics for our show notes that you do every week, which is awesome. And we have so many wonderful patrons to... Thank, and I never can read them that quickly. <laughs> but we have our death I'll show you how to do a screenshot have... one day. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> when you're older. <laughs> when I'm older. <laughs> all right, everybody. We'll see you next week. Bye-bye. Bye, you all. <laughs> Get your glow sticks. Play with your Zima boards. <laughs>